So the next series of videos is um, technically going to be a built-in, but um, and I already have a few of those on the channel. The nice thing about built-ins are they're usually a little bit different, even though they're essentially the same sort of piece of furniture. So even though I don't like um, too much repetitiveness on the channel, I'm kind of held in place by the fact that these are customer jobs. So what is on the channel is really the work that I'm getting at the moment. So I, I don't really, it, my channel is not dictated, the, the, the content of it is not dictated by necessarily what I want, but what is available for me at the time. But the nice about this is because it's a walk-in closet, it is going to be a little bit different. So, so that is nice, but pretty straightforward with this. It's gonna be extremely similar to how I build built-ins. The layout's a little different. Obviously, this one has two wings on the side, so it's more of a, of a, of a, of a nook than necessarily a lot of the times I make this. These are either full wall built-ins or they're flanking a fireplace or a TV um, or something like that. So the first video I've already edited and that's going to be making the main carcasses and then I'll get into the face frame and, and all these uh, drawer fronts and, and door parts and whatnot in later videos. So I have plans drawn up for this. The, um, it had to fit in a very p particular size space, so it's just easier for myself and the customer to make changes as we go with plans. It does make building this a little bit easier because I could pull the dimensions from it. I'm not making these plans available for sale. Um, it takes a lot of time to turn this image into sellable plans. And because it is such a particular space, I can't imagine people would get a lot of usefulness out of those plans anyway. So to start this off, like I said, this is very similar to how I build built-ins. They're just different size cabinets. I'm going to be ripping down some two by sixes. The base of this is going to be five inches. So obviously I chose two by sixes to get that. These are going to be five and a half inches wide. That's the width of a two by six. I'm going to rip off both sides. So I have two nice square edges. This is just the cheapest white wood I could find. The base is important for this because not only will it give me an attachment point for the baseboard, which will dictate the height of the, the base, but it also is a way to level the built-in. If you start by just adding eight foot cabinets or however tall cabinets you want on the floor, it gets really hard to level those and keep everything square. So you can have this base, you can make all your adjustments from the base, and then when you go to build on top of it, everything going up from that point will be square and level. And then I could go through and cut all these down. This is rather long. I think it's about 13 or 14 feet long. And then each of the wings is about three feet wide. So I made the one, the backside base in two sections. I've made the mistake of even though I can make it in one piece, I know this is a customer I've worked for before. In fact, they are the people that I installed the built and I installed to the channel earlier this year. They're also getting one of these. So I know where this is going. I've been in their home and it's up a flight of stairs that has two turns in it and then into a rather tight um, side room. So going into it, knowing that also dictated a little bit how I was going to build this. So I made sure my bases were in multiple sections. Um, if you're doing something like this in your home, it's going to be the easiest way to do a built-in because you could just transport it pretty easily. But um, taking all this stuff apart can be a little bit of a pain. And then all I do is I put some drywall screws in it because I have them around the shop. I square everything up, get them temporarily attached with clamps. You can see how all those pieces will come apart. Now you can see, um, I lied, this is not 13 feet, so 101 inches. And I always make these about three eighths of an inch to a half inch smaller um, on either side than I need usually three eighths if I'm doing both sizes. So that's what those little flanges of wood are for. My frame is smaller. I have those flanges so I know exactly the width. And then for this video and the purposes of, of helping people, I went on here and I kind of drew out how I'm gonna lay out my cabinets. I'm putting a face frame, all of these, so all of my depths have to be deducted from that thickness of the face frame. And the newest way I like to attach those is by making a, uh, a groove on the edge of my plywood carcasses and then a receiving groove on the face frame. So I have, I have to subtract three eighths of an inch from the depth of all of my pieces. And then from there, it's pretty easy. And like I said, most of that math was already done for me because I had these drawn up. I put it on the, the, the base so that people can get a little better idea of how these things come together. But essentially that back 
cabinet is going to be two large cabinets so I could just go through and, and cut all of my widths and um, I'll cut them down to, to length. Now this back cabinet is going to come completely apart because like I said it's about four feet wide um, by about uh, it's a little less than eight feet tall but it's two feet deep so it's, it's quite large and then the same thing for the sides you could see I drew out where the carcass is going to be where it will intersect the face frame I can measure from my depth and the two side cabinets are the same depth which is about 16 inches I could subtract what I'm going to be adding on with the face frame and then rip down my sides so the two back cabinets are going to be completely different sizes the two side cabinets are going to be similar the widths are a little different the depths are the same but then the layout of the inside of all of them is going to be a little different so that's where this was was a little different than built-ins a lot of times with built-ins the cabinets match there's usually a base with some cabinetry and then upper shelves but these all um, like I keep saying are, are a little bit different and then I could go through and cut these down to size they don't go all the way to the ceiling which will be a little bit easy for the install I don't have to worry about crown molding or anything like that or worrying about making them the perfect height to fit um, there's going to be an upper shelf on all of these created basically by the top of the cabinets so that was a little bit nice and I could just cut down these pieces so they're all going to be the same height so I took I right now have um, four sides for the back and then four sides for each wing I could take those eight pieces and, and uh, cut off the tops on all of them now this radial arm saw is not going to give me the nicest cleanest cut but this is going to be painted so you do you can take some liberties with paint quality furniture because it's much easier to hide and fix mistakes so if there's a little bit of tear out on this especially since most of the stuff is going to be against the wall you'll you'll never really see it and then I'm going to go through and start putting my rabbits and my dados in um, for the base I like to have a little bit of a flange on the bottom so that's what I'm going to do first um, all this plywood is usually different thicknesses when you get it so I made sure I knew the thickness which luckily all my sheets were identical sometimes if you go and get a bunch some of the sheets are even different I set up my dado stack so it will cut perfect thickness and then I actually used the base as a wing to make these cuts a little a little safer because they can't relieve her off the saw so much you want something to catch it on that other side so you can see that bottom dado is leaving a little bit of a foot on the bottom you do not want flat bases sitting on top of your base it's only going to have those two contact points on either side it's really difficult to find plywood nowadays it's totally square especially plywood that as big as these sheets are going to be so if you have a flat base that you're trying to sit on top of the base that you made it's going to wobble if you only have to level it on two contact points it becomes much easier and then you could see I adjusted my wing so that I could slide in between the wing and the table saw which I could push these boards with my hip make it a little bit easier to cut and I could put all that bottom dado which will hold the bottom shelf for all the cabinets that's identical put an inch face frame on the bottom so like I said that shelf will come up an inch from the bottom and then I could do the top the tops of these are going to be flush so you could see I put my sacrificial fence on my saw and um, I'm cutting these right to the top now sometimes I do these in pieces to save material but since all of these cabinets are open except for the one on the side that has the drawers um, you're gonna see the top so I made everything a solid piece so the shelving on these are all in different spots for the two bigger cabinets in the back you can see there's my bottom data with my little flange um, I these are almost exactly in the center so I measured up from the top side of that dado and then the bottom side of my top dado and I got exactly 42 I marked 3 eighths of an inch off of that center line and that will give me 3 quarters now the safest way to cut these longer dados right in the middle of the piece because the fence on my table saw only goes to 24 inches is going to be on the radial arm so I put a dado stack in there and I could just follow that mark and then I have a saw stop set up for these so that I could cut all four of those back uh, shelf dados on my four panels identically but it's it's out of frame in this so that's why you're seeing me going through and flipping the pieces now this radial arm saw goes out about 16 inches so it's not gonna be able to cut the whole thing so you can see I'm doing half of it 
and then I, there's my stop on the the the, the, uh, the miter miter saw, and then I could go through and um, realign this, and then cut from the other edge to finish out that dado. So I know the, I this is the way I prefer to make cabinetry, especially cabinetry that I have to transport. I find that it's really easy to glue together. I like that these cabinets hold themselves together. Um, I like the added glue that goes in the dados. I know not everyone makes them this way. It is a little bit more of a time commitment, but um, I just find that to be a superior way to build them. So that is the, the way I choose to do it. So on this, you can see this bottom one's gonna have quite a large drawer that I don't have drawn in this yet. So that opening was 19 inches. So from the bottom of this side panel, I came up, I accounted for the face frame, and that's how I marked the shelf. So you can see the opening is at 19, the face frame is gonna be two inches, and then from the top of that two inches, which will be at 21, I came down three quarters, and that's where the shelf would be, so it's flush with the face frame on the front. The face frames on these are pretty wide because the back cabinet has very, very long um, shelves. They're f uh, about 48 inches. So I told the customer I'd prefer to put a thick face frame on this. So then in order to match that back cabinet, the entire piece got a two inch face frame. And then it was the same thing. Like I said, the two side wings are similar in size, but where their shelves go is different. So I cut, um, the two sides of this one and then the other one that has the doors and all the drawers the shelf is up higher you can see where that is i marked out all the drawers i usually do those as dados as well and um but for this like i said since i'm transporting it um, and i knew i was going upstairs trying to bring that cabinet upstairs with added wood was going to be a real pain so you'll see how i solve that problem um, in a later video so then once I have all of the marks for my, um, even though I'm calling it bottoms and tops, all of these are essentially getting three shelves, then I could go through and cut the rabbit for my backer. I use half inch backers on all of these, which is a little bit of overkill, but these are really wide pieces and I definitely wanted a backer on them. Once again, I know a lot of people build these without backers. I prefer to have them on there. I feel like it squares up the piece. It makes everything a little bit sturdier. And even though these are gonna be screwed to the wall, it just makes installing them easier if they're already square. So you can see that now my opening is exactly 15 inches. It's just a groove on the back I'm putting. So the groove's gonna be the same thickness as my, my backer. And um, I did that on all of my pieces. So then I could start cutting for the shelves. So this is pretty easy. You can see I measured now that I have the backer in place because that will deduct thickness off of your shelves. I could cut all these. So obviously the two sides are going to be the same depth and the back uh, thicker cabinets will be, will be different. My dados were three eighths of an inch thick. So I have to add on material to go into those dados. So that's why I'm adding uh, three eighths of an inch. And then I could go through and cut these uh, well, all my pieces once I have them ripped down. This took up like I think 11 sheets of three quarter inch ply. It was it's a pretty big unit. These back cabinets, like I said, they're both of them are 48 inches wide and they're 24 inches deep. So that's why I made them in pieces. There's no no way to transport that safely and carry it up the stairs uh, at that size. So once I had all my shelves cut, I can consider doing the front. And like I said, that is going to look like this. It's going to be a little quarter inch um, lip. And then I could put my face frame in it. That will make more sense in the next video when I'm doing my face frames. But I really like this method. It leaves for a nice clean surface and easily attachable face frames. So before I start putting all this stuff together, I'm going to put that groove on all of my panels. I have my sacrificial fence in place, everything's set up. I always do test cuts for stuff like this, which was what that panel was that I was showing. And this, like I said, is going on all of my pieces. This ended up turning into a little bit of a mistake, which you'll see in a later video just because I'm used to making these butted up against the wall. So usually my face frames on each edge is wider than I need. I forgot that this has two sides sticking out into space. So it, um, 
I should have put the rabbet on those two edges in a different spot. It ended up not affecting the build, but you will see in a later video that that was a little bit of a mistake. So this is a lot of cutting. It's cutting down all your pieces. It's adding all of your cuts for your shelves. It's adding a rabbet for the back. It's adding a rabbet for the front before you even put anything together. But like I said, I do find it a superior way to make cabinetry. Um, and it's much easier, I think, to put them together. And all the steps going forward, I find to be easier because it really squares up all your frames. So then once I had everything together, right now we're looking at the back. You could see how it lines up all my marks on my base. If you're new at this, there's no shame in drawing stuff like that out on your base. I'm a visual person. I like to be able to see things before I can do it. So sometimes if you have that base, it's, it's nothing you'll ever see. The customer will never see it. There's no, there's no shame in drawing that out, getting all your measurements perfect before making these cuts. An off cut on pieces of plywood this big can mean having to buy four new sheets, and they're about $80 a pop these days, so it could get pretty expensive. And then that was just the math I had drawn out for the backers. Um, I could cut those, like I said, they're, they are half inch. Uh, this is all maple veneer ply. It's cabinet grade maple veneer ply. And on stuff like this, I always cut the smaller dimension so that it will fit on the table saw and I could put those in place. And then, like I said, cut the top. This is will also not leave the nicest edge, but you'll never see the, the edge of this backer because it will be against the wall and uh, towards the ceiling. But I use a circular saw to do that as well. Now I made a mistake with this because I changed my dimensions for my drawing a little bit because I thought I could make it a little wider. And you can see that if I put this scrap piece in place, which is 48 inches wide, it is about 15 sixteenths of an inch too small. Now I can make the backer in pieces or I could shrink this cabinet by 15 16 and I could put a full 48 inch wide piece of, of backer on the, the larger cabinets. That's what I decided to do. So with those still clamped in place, I lowered them on the table saw. I cut all my shelves down by 15 16 put it back together. This is just showcasing how much sturdier it is with the backer in place. These big cabinets without those back sides to hold everything in place are like parallelograms. And this has no glue or anything in it. And you can see my two edges meet perfectly. So I, I know at this point everything's square because these are going to get glue, glue. These two back ones, you can see how large they are, are going to get glued up in the space. 